You tuned in to Goddess Revival, and today's topic is the creation story, and it's her creation story. So part of what I'm doing on this channel is understanding her, and this take on creation came to me by a friend who was reading a book to me, and I heard this. And immediately I was like, yes, this is the creation story. There's always perceptions and interpretations and perspectives about the reality of this human lived experience and stories and narratives we have been told and passed down. But what if they aren't what we always thought? And I'm in the discovery of that. And so, this came to me because I was calling in. I was asking about Eve and asking about Sophia and Isis and Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary and Joan of Arc and all of these hers before me and she's. And what are their, their teachings and their lessons that they can give to me? The grand matriarch and the matriarchs even beyond that, the matriarchs of the Gnostics and the alchemists, the hermeticists, and the, the Druids. So, in 1529, this guy, pardon me, I have to get my glasses, now I'm going to read the scripture of this creation story that I absolutely adore. Uh, okay. Uh, it's the, the scripture is by... Uh, this, these are funny names. So, Pencreas Cornelius Agrippa in uh, 1529. And so, it's out of a chapter or post below where this comes from. The author is stating, I personally believe that Eve was God's last and grandest creation. Thus, women are the superior gender. I am not alone in this interpretation of the scriptures. The following is from the Declamation on the Nobility and Preminus of Female Sex by this Henrius Cornelius Agrippa. So he states, we know that among all that was created by the best and grandest God, the essential difference consists in the fact that certain things live forever while others are subject to corruption, and change, and that in the course of his creation, God advanced following an order that consisted in the beginning of the more noble of the first group and the ending with the most noble of the second. Thus he created first the incorruptible angels, then the souls, for Augustine affirms that the soul is the first parents created at the same time as the angels before the body was fashioned. Then he created the incorruptible bodies such as the heavens and the stars, the elements that although incorruptible are nevertheless subject to various changes. And from them he formed all other things that are subject to corruption, proceeding again by descent from the more insignificant through all the degrees of humor to the perfection of the universe. Thus were created first minerals, then vegetables, plants, and trees, followed by inanimate beings, and finally, fruit beasts in order of reptiles, fish, birds, and quadriceps. Again, after all this, he created two human beings in his image, man first and then woman in whom the heavens and the earth and every embellishment of both are brought to perfection for when the creator came to the creation of the woman he rested himself in this creation thinking that he had nothing more honorable to create in her were the completed and consummated all the wisdom and the power of the creator. After her, no creation could be found or imagined. 
since therefore the woman is the ultimate end of creation, the most perfect accomplishment of all the works of God and the perfection of the universe itself, who will deny that she possesses honor surpassing every other creature? Without her, the world itself, probably already perfect to a fall and complete at every level, would have been imperfect. It could only be perfected in the creature of all others by far the most perfect. And he ends there. And the author says, a number of biblical scholars over the centuries have come to the conclusion that the female is closer to deity than the male. The voices of those with such an opinion have been called heretics and have been severely persecuted. Women have been indoctrinated by religion that they are the weaker sex and thus wives must submit to their husbands. And then the book goes on. I had the grandest of opportunity reciting this at festivals in the summer of 2022 at women's festivals. Because the story we've been told about where we come from is just simply not true. It's been indoctrinated into us. And for those that remember and know that it's more of this story and not in a superior dominating way. It's just how can you deny that we aren't the more superior being, bringing beings forth out of nowhere, not doing a thing? That is what a woman is. She is an egg bearing, milk producing, bleeding with the circadian rhythm of the planet of the moon, cycling death and life every month. She is nature and this place is her. The universe is her, all giving, so is she. The universe is all nurturing, so is she. She is destructive in death, and so is she. She understands death, so does she. She sacrifices for her children, for her creations, so does she. I love this creation story. It never sat right learning the Christianity story of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's father, mother, child. Everything here is father, mother, child. Yes, we all have a spirit. So does the mother. So does the father. So does the child. It's the ether. The triad is father, mother. Father, mother, child. Father, son, mother, moon. We are in the womb of creation. We were all in vitro female. We were all her. Share this scripture everywhere. Like, share, and comment. Please, let's start the discussion about this scripture. Thank you for listening. Please. Many blessings. <laughs>